Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sam Gowadia. I'm 26 years of age. I'm from India originally, so I was born there. I came uh, in Australia, so I've lived here for about um, 17 years, alhamdulillah. So in my uh, professional life, I'm a data center technician. And uh, in my personal life, um, I'm married and I've got two kids, alhamdulillah. When I came to Australia, it was around uh, 2005. That's when we migrated. I came with my parents. So I lived with, we lived with uh, my uncle uh, from my mother's side. And um, I also had my cousins. So we stayed there for a couple of years when we first came here. So I started school, I started in my third grade uh, when I came here. And um, I guess school was very hard for me, typically in the start of it. Where, when I, where I was in my country, we had a different language that we spoke. I spoke Gujarati, uh, spoke Hindi. When we came here, English was um, very difficult uh, and I had a very bold accent at the time as well. Yeah, I had to find uh, school very challenging. My father was the main one who set the, um, the standard in my household that you need to take responsibility for yourself, you need to do well in school, um, you need to part participate in all activities, uh, you need to be very disciplined. And I was very contrary to that, uh, subhanAllah, in the beginning. Uh, but my dad played a very uh, much of, a, he played a big uh, part in being a role model um, to me in the beginning of, um, beginning of my life when I was here in Australia. And my mother also had to, um, you know, follow the same atmosphere that we had in the household, uh, especially um, her brother, who's my uncle that we lived with at the time, um, they were very strict, um, that you had to do really well, you had to get good grades, you had to um, you know, participate in sports and extracurricular activities and stuff. And um, I, find, I found things very challenging. Um, but my mother was very, very, she cut a lot of slack for me. And she was very supportive, um, alhamdulillah. So I believe I um, converted to Islam when I was 21 years of age, so that's going back five years ago. My former belief was Hinduism, and I would not say I was highly devoted. I had a lot of questions even when I was um, in my former belief. Um, most of the practices that I would um, do was basically me following my parents' commands. They would uh, take me to temples, or if we had any um, festivals, religious festivals or any events, then I was to basically participate and um, just learn what I can. Um, but I was not to ask any um, you know, questions. The things that I was really missing was a um, sense of purpose. I remember specifically at one moment when I was very little, I had experienced a death um, in my family. I really want that really sparked the question in my heart like why do we die why do we have to die and where do we go after death I remember asking my uh, parents that question and also crying at the same time because it was a very sad uh, sort of an experience a moment for me and my parents basically said everyone has to go you go to God after you die then I guess ever since that moment I in throughout life I carried that question in my heart then what is my purpose if I'm gonna die anyway uh, what am I here for Before I converted, um, I would be very anxious in all walks of life, especially with schooling. It was very difficult for me, trying to meet my uh, parents' expectations, the expectations of the community and also my family at large. I would mainly try to be by myself, be very, be very introverted, not really open up, not want to go out anywhere and just yeah, be on my own and just um, try, try to stay away from people as much as I can just to be in my own mindset. If I were to um, reflect on my life before and after Islam, before Islam, I had no definition of my responsibilities and my roles that I played, not only to myself, but also to the people around me. After Islam, I realized that I not only have a role for myself, that I need, need to be a better human being, but I also need to be a good son. I need to be a better member of the community. And you know, wherever I work, I need to be a better colleague. I need to also be a good father. 
I realized that I needed to be a, um, a good father and Islam gave me that definition of the roles and responsi different responsibilities that I had to play um, in my life. I remember specifically when I was, when I was in India, I was very little. Back where my uh, paternal grandparents lived, there was a small community of Muslims at the time. And um, all I knew about Islam was that, okay, uh, a Muslim prays, um, and um, they wear long white clothing. And I remember specifically at one point, um, it was in the middle of the day, and I was out, I was out in the street on the doorstep, and um, I heard something in the distance over a loudspeaker, someone singing, and I would um, I would ask my grandmother, what is that um, that voice that I hear in the distance? Uh, she's like, oh, someone's just singing over the loudspeaker, and I noticed that that would happen over a couple of hours. And I realized after a few years that that was the call to prayer, that was the Adhan. So that was the first time I ever um, heard about Islam. I guess my main perspective was very molded and shaped, you know, watching movies at the time. I was very much into movies and every time there was a movie where there was a Muslim that was shown or Islam was portrayed, even though it was shown in a very negative light, um, I always saw Muslims in a very um, in a high social status compared to the others. And that gave me a very positive outlook on Islam, even though the whole message that they were trying to portray, unfortunately, was very um, demeaning. So when I was in a very much of an existential crisis with my religious views, I, was, I felt I wasn't getting anywhere with my re religion or my former belief. I wasn't getting any answers. So I decided, why don't, why don't I venture out and uh, find out about other religions? Uh, see what they have to say about purpose of, li purpose of life, my responsibilities, and where we go after where we go after death. And I had a lot of friends with different religious views. I remember specifically asking my friend um, who was Christian and um, about Christianity. What do you guys believe in? Uh, who do you follow? He told me uh, about Jesus, how Jesus loves me, how he died for for our sins, how he said, um, you know, uh, he follows a particular sect of um, Christianity. And if I follow that sect, um, then um, I'll be given um, salvation from God. I'll be given paradise. And um, that answered my question about, I guess, you know, what are the purpose um, after death? But I also wanted to know about my life that I have here on you know, earth before I go. So there was a specific uh, person in my life uh, who was Muslim. Although he was um, not 100% practicing at the time, he was born in a Muslim family and he, and he knew a lot about Islam, so I thought I'd ask him. And, he's, and he um, said, well, why don't you read the Qur'an? He, uh, so I downloaded the app on my phone and then I would read it. Yeah, I was very awestruck by the words, specifically when uh, it was mentioned about paradise, about um, gardens running beneath your feet. That really sparked my interest in um, reading the Qur'an and keep on reading the Qur'an. Uh, although I did not feel like it answered a lot of my questions at the time, but that was the first moments when I, um, I started to learn about the religion a bit more. So this was a point when I was 21 years of age and um, I wanted to get married at the time. I knew this girl who was Muslim. She, her father had told me that if I needed to get mar uh, married, I needed to convert and I needed to learn a bit more about Islam. He suggested you need to go to, um, go to the mosque and um, you need to convert. Although there was no guidelines given on uh, the, you know, the religion itself, uh, he said this is what you need to do if you wanted to get married. And uh, I thought to myself, why do I need to convert um, if I needed to get married? Um, I can be myself. So I guess I was not 100% convinced that Islam is, is the way of life for me. So after I realized that if this is the, the only way that I need to get married, then I need to invest more time. So I told him that I need to give me time to learn a bit more about the religion, invest a bit more time, and um, I guess then we can go forward. So I remember one night specifically, I went to a mosque and um, I was knocking on the door. I wanted to speak to someone to ask more questions, to get more clarification. No one would answer the door. I went to the windows, there were people who were inside. I was knocking on the window. So I was knocking on the doors, the windows, no one was answering, even though I felt like they could see me. But um, yeah, I was not being noticed at all. So I'm like, maybe forget it, maybe this is not the time, I'll come back later. So as I was about to walk out the door, there was someone who came inside and I said, uh, he's like, are you okay? Do you need any help? 
And I said, well, I, I'm, this is my first time at a mosque and um, I'm here to find a bit more about Islam and I'm potentially looking to convert as well. And he said, well, come with me. And um, he took me inside. He took me to um, this brother. There was a group of other brothers that were sitting there at the time. And um, they, I guess they wanted to know, uh, why are you here? Why, why, why do you want to convert? Is someone you know, forcing you to convert? And I said, no, no one's forcing me to convert. Um, he said, um, why do you believe that you know, Islam is the, is the religion for you? I said, well, after reading the Quran, I guess I've realized that this is the truth. It answers my questions of my purpose of my life and also what happens after death. He said, well, then I guess you're, you're just ready to take the Shahada. That's all you need to do. Do you want to say it in private with me or do you want to say it in front of the brothers? And I didn't mind. I said it in front of the brothers. As I said, the Shahada, it was like a, uh, the whole load of burden that just fell off my shoulders. And it felt, I felt very light. I felt I was a newborn, as they say after saying the Shahada and uh, everyone embraced me. So it was a very, very warm moment for me. And from then, that's where I, the, the brothers took me in. They would uh, you know, teach me a lot about the Deen and um, I've learned a lot ever since. It was very difficult in the initial stages and uh, me and my wife knew that eventually we had to uh, break the news to my parents at least, because we knew that we couldn't just, you know, keep practicing behind closed doors. Eventually they'll see things change in our lives and they'll ask the questions. So me and my wife decided that it was best to invite our parents over, tell them that, you know, we, we looked into uh, our, my former belief and uh, we, also, we also looked into other religions. So they don't feel like, you know, I, I haven't studied um, Hinduism in, enough to, um, you know, convert to Islam all of a sudden. Yeah, eventually we told them that, uh, that we read the Quran. I believe that, you know, this is the ultimate truth from God and this is what I need to follow. And he was very shocked. Uh, that was his first reaction. He's like, what? I don't, he's, uh, he felt he, that we have not spent enough time in, um, you know, learning about Hinduism, that uh, we need to learn more from him. And I said, you're more than welcome to tell us more. And uh, we also feel like we need to tell you more about Islam as well of what we believe and what we've learned so far. And um, I gave him the Quran, the first ever copy that I was given when I converted. And I told him, uh, this is, you know, the book that, you know, we, we believe in, we read. And uh, my mother was also worried as well. Like, you know, uh, I guess the view was very much shaped around media and the negative connotation that they had of Muslims. They, they even though they were worried initially in the beginning stages, they eventually, um, understood that, okay, uh, there's nothing that we can do to change his mind, change his understanding. I felt like I got a lot of help when I, when I converted. So majority of my help was from the masjid that I used to attend to. And the brothers would call me over at least once every week after prayers um, to sit with them, to learn how to um, read the Quran, learn, um, learn from the talks that we, we used to have. I used to att attend a lot of youth talks, so they were very supportive. I felt I've become very disciplined with myself ever since I've become a Muslim. I've started my day very early and I've realized my potential of starting my day very early. That's one of the positive changes. And uh, also my relationship with my parents and uh, also the members of my community have improved where I've become more engaging rather than being uh, an introvert. Uh, I've also had a lot of confidence through Islam. I feel like I'm able to uh, speak to people better, more confident. My um, character in terms of my mannerism have also improved. I guess our Prophet was a um, very big role model for me. Ever since I learned about him وسلم, through um, his biography, I realized that some of the things that he went through, I also went through. And some of his companions I went through, I also went through. So he was a very defining role model. He helped me understand my different roles that I had with the people that were around me, especially in being a father, in being, uh, being a husband. So I guess a favorite hadith that um, stands out for me, uh, and as I'm a big lover of food, I love food, is saying by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
where um, someone asked our Prophet وسلم, what's the best traits in Islam and he said uh, feeding people and um, greeting those that you know and those that you don't know so I guess that has um, impacted me in a way where um, you know that's made me more confident in um, greeting those who I don't know as well getting to know them and uh, getting to know them in a way where like you know you share food whatever you have and I feel like there's there's more blessings that way as well the aspect of Islam that I was most influenced by was the prayer itself I feel like the prayer gave me a break in my day in my life otherwise I just felt like a race car just zooming through and I felt like it gave me that pit stop to stop to reflect to slow down and to come back stronger in whatever task whatever endeavor I pursue and that's been my favorite ever since my favorite bit about Islam and being a Muslim is diversity that we have in our religion in the sense of how multicultural it is we have people from all around the world that you would meet you know at workplace or wherever you go wherever you find the Muslim you you know you offer your salam you get to know them and it's so wonderful that you share the same belief no matter where you're from yeah it's very easy to um, strike conversation so I guess that's been my favorite part The main problem that I experienced as a convert was, um, I guess, not being involved with family as much as I was before. I guess um, family would um, exclude me from gatherings and events. They were not able to understand me, even though I would try to explain to them that um, I cannot come for because of a religious reason. So I felt like when, even when I tried to explain it, they were not able to understand. So I guess the thing that bothers me um, is that was there, is there anything more that I can do or that I can say to explain to my family that you know this is my belief but um, nevertheless we can still get along we can still meet up and um, have a you know a general chat or anything and um, keep in touch. I guess there's two advice that comes to mind if I were to give it to someone first thing is make the intention in your heart that you want to find the truth, that you want to find answers, that you want to be helped in whatever endeavor that you're pursuing. The second thing is ask questions. I mean, yes, you will do your research online, but it can also be biased what you find and you wouldn't know if this is the right answer or not. Uh, my suggestion is going to a masjid or asking the community, someone who is more learned, to sitting down, learning, going back, reflecting, do further research to see if that matches and if that really um, if that answers your questions if that benefits you